so I'm a, a known a known public speaker. I've had some great success uh, on stage, off stage, written a number of books. I went to work with Steve and Chris uh, because I wanted to take my game to the next level, and um, flew out to uh, we were out in Dallas here this past week, and uh, the best six grand that I have ever spent. I, I've read a ton of books, done a bunch of videos. Tired of it. I didn't need any more fucking videos. I wanted the real deal. I wanted to work with somebody that could just get to the bottom line, show me how to do it. Steve knows his shit. He showed me how to do it. His partner, Chris, phenomenal. Right now. The reason that Steve and I decided to do this at all um, was this uh, marketer. He's one of the best in the world. He said to us, the only thing you really need to know to be considered an expert at any subject is just a little bit more about that subject than the average person. And so he said that to us, he said that to a lot of people in the business, and they took his message and ran with it. And now as a result, you know, the market's saturated, and it's hard to really tell what's what's good and bad, you know, so saturated. And uh, by the way, this is a uh, danger. We're doing some danger. We're driving, we're shooting. This is the fourth day in our six-day workshop that uh, it's pretty crazy. Do some content videos that I think you're gonna like that just show a few places along the way, and we probably miss about a hundred <laughs> other places. The things that we're learning, some of the key points uh, that we also cover in our product uh, that's coming up. It's a little bit cheaper, a little bit under six six thousand dollars. <laughs> is is uh, we're, we're covering that in these videos, so we hope you do them. We do them for free so that you guys can do them and get results and know that uh, we're not one of those house of cards that has a really good marketing funnel. That, yeah. All right, so one of the first things, one of the most important things you can know about any strip club or any hired gun situation, any restaurant where there's chicks around, right, is that you want to be a part of that culture and part of that family that's going to do better than any routine that you have. If you're a part of that culture and that family, you don't have to worry about attraction, you don't have to worry about. Uh, gaining their interest in all these little tricks or whatever. You can be more of yourself. You can just show up and have something happen. Now, how we did that is we're talking about the third night here. The first night when we were in Dallas, we went to a lot of the same clubs. The first night, we told a story about one of our students. He handed a $5 bill to the girl and, you know, just Chris uh, told him to say something. She rotated around to where our table was. They started talking, let go of it. We don't go to that club the second night. The third night, we go to that club at 1 a.m. He sees her on stage, goes up to the stage, and, and talks to her, makes himself known, and she, you know, said, oh man, you know, I thought you were gonna be here last night, da 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 But then, she rotates around to the, her second to last stage, or, or whatever it was, and he says, look, the club's about to close, I, I'm about to leave town, I wanna talk to you, just give me five minutes. After she gets off with her rotation, she goes and talks to another dancer, comes up to him, and basically he says, look, I'm in and out of town all the time, you're awesome. Uh, pretty much for the most part stating massive intent, but also not buying into that sensuality, not buying into the seduction, not buying into the product of her as a dancer, but more of buying into the real parts of her. Gets her number, starts texting, and uh, at 2.45, you know, we leave the club, starts texting, sets up a day two with her, and what happens is, is actually, Chris is gonna go over exactly what you do is once you get the dancer's number. However, being part of the family, being part of the culture, being part of that environment and being aware of it is more powerful than anything else. And one last thing that he said was actually that when he added up all the time that he spent with her, he probably spent less than 10 minutes, five minutes actually talking to her, although it was a span of three days. But that's how badass the shit works and how easy it is. There's something really important to know after you get a dancer's phone number. That is, first of all, her lifestyle and her schedule is really different from yours, okay? So there's probably like two good times to, to assume um, to meet her. So the first one I would say to suggest it to meet her someplace after she gets off of work, like a 24-hour diner or someplace like that. If she's too tired or says, no, I'm just tired, I want to go to sleep, I just want to get home, it's fine. Don't take it personal because we are tired. Um, second of all, if she says that to you, then it's probably really good for you to suggest, so what about tomorrow? A happy hour someplace by your club on your way to work. I'll meet you, 
a couple of drinks, get you warmed up and ready to work. That's, a, that's actually a really good suggestion. So these are the two times you got to remember, if they turn you down for breakfast, seriously, they're going to bed at 4 or 5 in the morning. They're not going to get up and meet you at 9. They're just not. They're not on your schedule. So it'd be best for you to compromise a little bit of your time and your schedule to meet their needs. Um, that'll sort of up your chances to, to meet with her the very next day or at least maybe right after work. So those are some tips for you. All right, so there's two things, just like how be a part of the family, two times to meet a stripper afterwards, or actually a hired gun. So there's basically two times that you can go to a strip club, a restaurant, or anything like that, which are vital, 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 vital. It's The first time is actually what Chris prefers more than me. It's right when the shift change happens. And the reason why is because everybody's fresh. They're not all like in that super, super work mode. Uh, usually, like if you're talking about a strip club, it's about 7 o'clock, uh, although different clubs have different times. But if you're there at around 10, like people are in a frenzy, that's when they're making their money, that's when all the time's happening. And also, you can even say the weekends are poor for that same reason, weekdays are better. Um, the next time is actually my favorite time. It's around 1 a.m. or maybe like 12.30. And the reason why is, is the girls are actually going around and looking to make money. However, at the same time, they're more tired, they're more willing to have a real conversation where they can be themselves now. The same thing goes for a restaurant. When a shift change happens and people are more willing to talk about what's happening the other day or what's happening with their work, they're just more relaxed and not into that workload. If you go to like a lunch rush or when it's like high time for dinner and there's a lot of tables being served, not good. However, before that starts and after that starts is vital. So those are two things that are just gonna help you out logistically and help things or make things happen. Shift change and at the tail end of the shift. So all these three things we've mentioned to you already and talked about, none of them are going to matter if you're not connected to your own motives and your own agendas. Um, what motivates you? Is it sex? Is it power? Is it control? I mean, what is it you want? And you have to be in touch with that because if you don't know that, how are you going to know where to start and how are you going to know where to end if you don't understand all that for yourself? I mean, it's about not lying to yourself and just being connected with the truth and going from there. Otherwise, everything that we are teaching and that we're showing you and talking about is going to be worthless if you're not connected to that. So that's really important. I just wanted to mention. Now we're doing something totally illegal. It's got to be illegal. You can't text message in Austin and drive. And you which, can't video tape I don't know anything about in the rain and traffic. <laughs> it's like weird. Just but traffic makes it easier. We're living on the edge. Yeah. That's, that's really what it comes down to. But no, I, I really hope I hope you guys like the content and all that fun stuff. And look, uh, good stuff. Leave your feedback. Leave any information of what you want to know more or if it's helping or how we can help you better because that's kind of what these yeah we want a dialogue are. we want a conversation so please 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 uh, don't hesitate to, to ask us questions and, and create that dialogue with us you know that's what we want just think it's like you're having sex with us now but the internet is one giant condom so <laughs> it feels what about that the good What's the <laughs> I don't know what the you don't want to know i can't spit that <laughs> oh god so, you know, here's the difference, because I, I have done in the field training with some other groups that are out there. And the difference is, is that Steve caters to people like myself, people that have reached a high level of success, people whose time is very valuable, who are men of status, uh, and that are looking to have success, uh, not only have their time value, but also have success with younger women. And so the other stuff I felt like was just like, it was hippity hoppity bullshit. Do you really like want me to go and do that to a girl or say that to a girl? It's almost kind of like ridiculous. I'm not a pickup artist. I don't want to be a pickup artist. I want to be good with women. 